All right, we're going to take a look at another example of finding the total area between a function and the x-axis. The key word here, again, is total. So every area that we find has to be positive, unlike the definite integral, which can, which can have negative area. So we're going to figure out the total area between f of x and sine of x and the x-axis. And we want to do that on the interval negative pi to 2 pi. Okay, so this is going to be our leftmost x value. This is going to be our rightmost x value. You can imagine with trig functions, as you know, um, probably from graphing them, that they do oscillate. So very likely this graph is going to cross above and below the x-axis. We'll have to figure out whatever's below the x-axis. Basically, we'll have to make that positive and, uh, to ensure that we're finding the total area and not the net area or just the definite integral. As we saw before with our first example, we want to figure out where this crosses the x-axis so that we can break up our integral into separate, several different pieces and just take the absolute value of each. So we're going to set sine of x equal to zero. In order to solve that, we would take the inverse sine of both sides. So basically, where does sine equal zero or where is the y value equal to zero in the unit circle? That is anywhere along the x-axis, which is any multiple of pi. So 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, so on and so forth, sine will be equal to 0. Step 2 is to determine the intervals of integration. Okay, so if, if we want to find the total area between negative pi and 2 pi, we will have to break that interval up based on these x-intercepts. So between negative pi and 2 pi, our graph is going to cross the x-axis twice. It's going to cross at 0 pi and pi. Okay, so because of that, we are going to end up with three separate intervals. We're going to have one from negative pi to 0, one from 0 to pi, one from pi to 2 pi. This is what these integrals will look like. And again, we're going to take the absolute value of each. So the first one, based on our first interval, is going to be the integral from negative pi to 0 of sine of x dx. We are going to put absolute value bars around that because uh, just to ensure that whatever area we get, we ensure that it's positive for total area. Our second integral is going to be from 0 to pi of sine of x. Again, we're going to put absolute value bars around that to ensure that that area is positive. And lastly, we're going from pi to 2 pi. And uh, that's the wrong parenthesis. We are going to put absolute value bars around it to make sure that it is positive. Again, just for conceptual reasons, I'm going to take a look at the graph of this function. All right, so here we have the function broken up into three separate integrals, and we're going to take the absolute value of each, and here's why. If you see from negative pi to zero, we would get a negative area back. If we take the absolute value of, the, of that, we're basically flipping it and making it positive. Because we're total area, all this area is considered positive. A second interval it won't matter from zero to pi, but taking the absolute value of it will ensure it's still too positive too. And then the third one becomes negative again. If we take the absolute value of that, it will make it positive. So this is why we're doing what we're doing. But again, you can do these steps without seeing the graph. This is just purely for conceptual reasons. Step four, determine the definite integral of each expression. Well, the definite, uh, the, the antiderivative of sine is going to be negative cosine. All right, it's not going to be positive cosine. That only works if you're going from cosine to sine. Um, and we're just going to split it up into three different antiderivatives, uh, or three different different integrals based on those three sets of uh, limits that we had. For our first one, it's going to be negative cosine of 0 uh, minus negative cosine of negative pi. So it's a double negative. So it's going to become cosine of 0 is 1. So it's going to become negative 1 plus, because the two negatives, cosine of negative pi. Cosine of negative pi is negative 1 as well. So you get negative 2, um, which gives you this area right here. But again, we will end up taking the absolute value of that to ensure it's positive. All right, for the middle one, it's the same antiderivative. The limits change, though, from pi to 0. You're going to end up with uh, positive 1 plus 1, which is 2, which gives you that middle area. Again, it won't hurt to take the absolute value, can, uh, considering if without the graph, you really wouldn't know um, whether it's negative or positive. And then third, um, you have uh, limits from pi to 2 pi. So it's going to be negative cosine of 2 pi minus negative cosine of pi. Cosine of 2 pi is 1. Make that negative. And then cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Again, if we take the absolute value of all three of these definite integrals, we get positive 6. 
and that will be our final step. So step five is take the absolute value. Step six is to sum up all of those absolute values, and that will ensure that we have our total area. So two plus two plus two equals six, and that's the area between the total area between the curve of uh, y equals sine of x and the x-axis on the interval negative pi to two pi. If you have any of the questions about this example, let me know.